Welcome to another episode of Camera Fusion. My name is Tony and today we're talking about the Goodman Zone. A year or so back I came across a video by Jess Hobbs. She was shooting a 3D printed pinhole camera by Dor Goodman. Dor Goodman has made this an open source project so a lot of people have taken it and made modifications. Now at the time I was really deep into my company Kingpin Cameras where we make luxury pinhole cameras out of wood. Um, I did do prototyping on a 3D printer though, which is why I had the Ender 3. Uh, this is the second one that I did. The first one that I did was gorgeous. It was beautiful. Uh, very similar, I had the carbon fiber in it, but I printed it out of white filament. I was so excited to shoot this camera and see the results. I booked a hotel on the beach, took the family for the weekend, and was pretty sure I was gonna get some pretty damn cool pictures for my video that I was gonna do on this camera. And I raced back home, developed the film. To my surprise, all the, all the photos were bad. They were all overexposed. And when I say overexposed, I don't mean a little bit overexposed. I mean completely 100% overexposed. So clearly there was a major problem with the camera. So I thought for sure that maybe the aperture blades were staying open or something like that, allowing light to get in. That wasn't a problem. The lens was working totally fine. I started thinking about it being a white filament I wondered if it was translucent, so I just happened to take out my phone and put on the light and put through it. And you could see the, f the light right through the camera. I was pretty devastated, I ain't gonna lie, because I would spent so much time building the camera. I did paint the inside of it, so I figured if there was any issues at all, that would have done the job and kept it light tight, but it just wasn't. Don't use white, even though it looks awesome. In fact, my copy of it, I was gonna call the Trooper because it just reminded me of a Stormtrooper. I thought it looked really, really cool the way it turned out. But the black version looks pretty damn awesome too. I had a lot of fun building it. Let me tell you a couple of the modifications that I made and about the build. The viewfinder right here, the cold shoe on it is offset and I didn't like how on the camera it was offset. I took and downloaded their um, cold shoe adapter that someone had made. I don't know if it was them or somebody that had modded it. But I went ahead and modified it further so that it would center up with the camera, which I ended up enjoying a lot better. And I purchased the lens and the viewfinder uh, knowing that this was pretty much the look that I was going to go for. I did not like the color of the viewfinder whatsoever, so I painted it and I was pretty shocked that the paint job actually turned out pretty good. I used the eyelets from the Kingpin camera which worked out well. I did have to make some adjustments to the files to be able to get it to size properly for my eyelets. Um, what else? As far as the uh, small rig uh, handle on it, I just happened to have that from one of my old Sony rigs. I had a cage on it and this was a grip that I had on it and I kept the grip. So I thought it would look cool on here and it does. I did change up the top plate right here. Um, I think it was more designed like, like it is similar on the sides right here. But I knew I wanted to use the carbon fiber inlay. Luckily for me because of Kingpin cameras I already had a lot of the equipment that I used to make this like the cutter for the vinyl. And Although I must say that Dor Goodman did an amazing job of the files that they supplied. Everything's there that one would need to do this even if you were cutting things by hand. I used the laser to cut the light seals and I love the way it turned out. This model actually works. I just, instead of like planning something big for it, I just stepped out on the back patio at the house and took some images of my plants, went inside and developed them right away and was glad to see that indeed they were actually there. This is a Mamiya press lens. I believe it's press lens. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below so I'm not misinforming anyone. Like I said, it's been a year or two since I built this camera. So you do have to buy a few things to get it up and going. If not, you can always do the pinhole camera. I think she has a 35 millimeter and a 120 film version as well. Dor Goodman is truly an artist. There's just no doubt about it. When you look at the project she's done, it's just, it's mind blowing, really. I mean, so inspiring to see. I, I don't know how big her team is, but the amount of work that went into everything is just incredible. Um, Back to the camera here. Uh, it does have a quarter 20 here on this side. I did leave that because I plan on doing the, I saw on the website, there's people that mounted like a little digital range finder on the side of it. So I just haven't got around to doing that, but I do plan on doing that right there. I say you got the dark slide and you gauge your distance off of, off of your off your lens. 
or if you get the rangefinder, you could use that or a combination of the two to dial it in. As far as operation, it's very easy. Everything is inside the lens. It's a leaf shutter design. You simply just cock it, release the shutter. You can use a shutter release cable on this lens design here, um, which I was going to do, but I did not uh, end up doing it. Now this is a slow lens, but that's totally fine. I mean, you're not going to shoot something like this inside. You're going to be shooting it outside anyways. And I mean, just look at it. Even if you don't shoot it, it makes for a great conversation piece and a piece of artwork sat on your shelf. With that, if you have a 3D printer or you know someone that does and you love film photography or you want to try to get somebody into it, go check out Dora Goodman's website. I'll put a link in it uh, below. It's pretty amazing what her and her team have done. And I just want to say, if she's watching this video, if she happens to see this video, just want to say thank you. You did an amazing job. I love the camera. And hopefully I did it justice in this video. If you stuck around to the end, let me say thank you so much. Maybe uh, consider subscribing if, if what I'm doing here is something that you're into. Other than that, guys, watch one of these two videos right here. And I'll see you next time.